and the most important message that the Hanuman Chalisa gives and Goswami Tulasi Das Ji is trying to tell us something. If we have the eyes to see and the mind to look peep through the message. It's such a beautiful message, amazing message. Because this is the first verse that he, opening verse where he offers prayers to the Guru and the prayer that he is offering is that with the grace of Guru, with the dust of Guru's feet, I'm cleaning up the mirror of my mind. And then he says, he adds an adjective there, Nija Manu. Mind is Manu and Nija Manu. Now, why is that that Goswami Ji is cleaning up the mind? And then why is not he is cleaning up his buddhi or anything else? So that's, that, that is something to think about. Why is he choosing mind or not buddhi? And then why is he calling it Nija Manu? So we will say it. And then also he puts again the emphasis on the mind in the third verse right away, right away, immediately. As soon as after he begins Anuman Chalisa, he puts the important on the mind and then praying also, also praying to Hanumanji. So first he cleans up the mirror of his mind with the dust of Guru's feet. And then he also, to make sure, he also prays to Lord Hanumanji to to give him Sumati and not Kumati. Mahabiri Vikrama Bajarangi, Kumati Nivaru, Sumati Ke Sangi. And that Sangi is also means Satsang. So only when you have a Sumati, only when you have a good Buddhi, good mind, auspicious mind, positive mind, Sumati, you will have Satsang. So Sumati Ke Sangi. So we will see why that is, why the mind is so important. For that, we have to go back into our basics of Advaita Vedanta, which you will see right away. Now, the yogi can advise the concept of mind. Now, where does mind stand in, in terms of our Advaita Vedanta? So, in Advaita Vedanta, we call about Antakaranas, Antakaranas. So, Antakaranas, we have the, which is the mind, Buddhi, Ahankara, and Chitta. So, Antakaranas, these are the Antakaranas. Now, we also have, in addition to the Antakaranas, we also have what you call the Bahya Karanas, the Bahya Karanas, the external tools. The Bahya Karanas meaning the Jnana Indriyas, which are the eye, ear, nose, skin, and tongue that we can feel, we can touch, we can, we can experience plus the karmendriyas, that action instruments, instruments of action, then the walk, which is talking, tongue, pani, hands, path, path is your, um, is your feet that you walk, and then, and then the elimination, the elimination part, and then the, and the procreation part. So these are all called karmendriyas. So walk, pani, pada, payu, upastakyani, we call them. So walk, pani, pada, these are the karmendriyas, and then the jnana indriyas through which you get information is the I. The reason they call jnana indriyas because you get information. It's not that you get jnana. So jnana here used in a very relative, in a lower sense of the, uh, the, of the word. So jnana means just information, just, just information. Uh, so through the eye, ear, nose, skin, and tongue, so these are the jnana indriyas. Now, from these are the external instruments from which this information gets fed to the antakaranas, which are the subtle vehicles. So, antakaranas are the subtle vehicles, and they consist of, like you said, mano, buddhi, ahankara, and chitta. So, let's see how this works. So, when any information comes through the bahya Karanas, like the eye, any information, or ear, or no sense of smell, then the mind perceives it. Then the intellect, buddhi, analyzes it, whether it's right or wrong, or what is the further course of action you should do with the information. So like a computer, you feed all the information, and the computer analyzes and throws out what is the result. So same way, buddhi analyzes the information and tells the mind, this is what we should do. But do you think we, th do you think we, we listen to buddhi most of the time? 99.9% .9 time we don't listen to buddhi. Because the mind 
does its own thing, even though buddhi is there in the background. Everyone has buddhi. Every human being has given buddhi. The moment you become a human being, once you are promoted from the animal incarnation and obtain a human body, God has endowed everyone with buddhi. So that buddhi always analyzes and tells you this is what you should do. But then the mind always does its own thing. And uh, we will see why that is. Now, and then uh, just another information here. The mind is associated. We also, we, we call the subtle vehicles. Annamaya kosha, manomaya kosha. So the mind is associated with the lower vehicles. When we say annamaya kosha, we mean the body. And then we say manomaya kosha, we, we call it the mental body. These are the subtle bodies that you don't see, but you see the annamaya kosha, you see the you see this body, Annamaya Kosha, but you don't see the Manomaya Kosha, but you, that is what, where we think. Whereas Buddhi is associated with the higher Koshas, Vijnanamaya Kosha and Anandamaya Kosha. So that's where Buddhi gets its information from higher sources. And that's where it analyzes and always gives us the right thing to do. So, so that's, that's, that's where the category they belong to. So now let's further go and see how this is happening. How we define mind. So where does mind say, why does mind does what it does? And we'll start with a simple definition. I know it's a psychology that's a whole like four or five year courses and people do PhDs and, and uh, people become psychiatrists and doctors and spend years. So, but then we will have, I'm um, not going that side, we just have a very simple Vedic scriptural definition of our mind, how it is defined in terms of Vedanta and our scriptures. Sankalpa vikalpatmakam manaha. So, in very simply stated in Sanskrit, mind pertains to sankalpas, imaginations, volitions, what you decide to do, mental resolve, intention, determination. So, that's one part that the mind does. And what else also the mind goes through? The mind is also a bundle of doubts, uncertainties, indecision, hesitation, suspicion, emotions, feelings, and thoughts. So, all this is. Vikalpa. So, and the sankalpa is when mind determines to do certain things. Now, the tool for the conduct of the jiva is the mind. In other words, we, like we said in the antakaranas, we have mano, buddhi, ahankaram. Ahankaram means I. Ahankaram is not used in a negative sense, in the, in the sense of pride, I'm proud, or I'm I am egotistical or I am arrogant. Not in that sense ahankar is used in the Vedantic word. When we say ahankar in Vedanta, the sense of I-ness, the sense of I, the, 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 the thoughts that I, I associated with and I, the, what I think I am, so who I think I am, which is definitely not who you really are. So ahankar means that, that, that I, that I-ness, the sense of I-ness, that I am this, I am that, I am that, I am a, ma I am a woman, I am a man, I am a child, I am a boy, I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, I am a physicist, I am a chemist, I am a computer scientist, I am a CEO, so all this goes with ahankar. Now what is this? Once the mind gets the information through the senses and um, it, it, the buddhi analyzes it, but it's up to the mind to accept it or not accept it, because now here the ego comes into the play also. So depending upon what the ego chooses to accept and what the mind, what the mind feeds the ego, this combination of ego, the sense of I, and the mind leads to action, leads to action. So. The mind sometimes chooses to ignore information received from buddhi and then twist it around and then decides on a different course of action and the ego cooperates with it. So the ego and mind both together is a very bad combination. So, but the mind in Vedantic terms, it described as karana Rupaha. Karana Rupaha means that is the cause. That is the cause. So means cause means that is that is what causes thought action. So then once the action is performed, I'll just give you a very crude example to 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 
make all this uh, vague information concrete. These are all abstract information. To make it very concrete, I'm going to give you a very simple analogy. You go to an ice cream parlor, the, my, the ice see the ice cream. So, but then you don't know which one to flavor. The first time you are going into ice cream parlor, the first time I uh, uh, went to ice cream parlor was a long time ago in Chennai. They used to have, uh, what was it called, Dasa, something, I even forgot the name. Anyway, so you have all these different flavors, butterscotch, vanilla, whatnot, chocolate, but you don't know which you like. So, but then by, you, you like some color, let's say you like the color of vanilla, whatever, but you don't know vanilla taste or how butterscotch tastes, you don't know anything about any of these tastes. So you pick up a vanilla, and then so this is the information that comes through the mind. But then buddhi is telling you, you have diabetes, you should not be eating this, or you will catch a cold, you should not be eating this. But you think the mind listen? No. Oh, I'm here once in a while with friends, let me go at it. So the buddhi is already pushed aside. So I'm with friends, let me have a good time just for one day. Are kya hoega ek din mein kuch parak nahi padta ek din. Or friends bhi batayenge aap. Are kya kuch nahi hoega. So this is where buddhi is set aside. Now, once the ego and the mind combining together, you buy the ice cream and you taste it. Now the information has come through two, three instruments, external instruments. The information has come through the eye, the information has come through the tongue taste, which are called the Bahya Karanas, and then the information has come through the smell. So all this has come. Now where this is all this is going to go? This information, the taste of this vanilla, now is recorded in chitta. So one of the antakaranas, mano, buddhya, hankara, chitta. Remember we said there's four components to antakaranas, and one of them is chitta. Remember here, buddhi, and then chitta, ahankara. Man, mano, buddhya, hankara, chitta, right? So we'll, the Shankara talks about this, but then we're not going there yet. So we'll just talk about the mechanics of all this. So this is how it works. So the, 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 the external instruments, the eyes see, then the tongue tastes it, and then the information, the taste of the vanilla is recorded in chitta now. So it's in the chitta. Now what happens next? You liked vanilla. Definitely you liked, and then the, you liked the taste. So this information is in, in, in the chitta now. It's recorded. So next time when you, when you go, um, it's not that it's so compulsive you have to eat an ice cream, but it so happens that, again, you're, you're, you happen to be another birthday party, and you happen to be there, oh, that vanilla tasted good, let me try that again. Because now this is recorded information coming from the chitta. So let me try that again. Buddhi is again telling you, no, it's not good for you. You will catch a cold. Even though you did catch a cold last time, you said, oh, okay, you know, it wasn't bad. But... You ignore the buddhi again, and you do it. Now, what happens when you do it second time, third time, fourth time? This, this information is strongly recorded in chitta, and it becomes what is called a vasana. Uh, don't think I'm don't don't think I'm digressing or I'm going away from Hanuman Chalisa. The reason I'm telling all this to give you the importance of mind, man. Why Tulsi Dasji talks about man? So importantly, why he starts with cleaning the mind first, you know, taking care of the mind first, then doing everything else. So that's why we are doing all this, why the mind has to be taken care of first of all. So once this, once this, once this vanilla ice cream experience is repeated a few times, you know, same thing with any other habit, people smoke, you know, the first cigarette doesn't, doesn't make a habit. The second, third, fourth, even though Buddhi keeps telling you, you'll get a cancer, you'll catch, you know, the smoking is no good. Your mother will scold you, your, your wife will uh, beat you up. So you think they listen, but they don't listen. But then that becomes slowly recorded in the chitta, and that becomes a habit. So that becomes a vasana. Now, see how the mind tricked you. It is so important here. This is the point I want you all of you to see. Now, the mind doesn't have to do much work. The mind has to do only the first few times, have to trick you along with the ego. Until it becomes a habit, mind says, oh, now I got you. Now I put you on autopilot. 
I don't have to even bother. I put you on autopilot. Now, whether, whether even if I tell you not to do it, even if I change my opinion, you're still going to do it. So good. Thank you so much. So the mind, once having tricked you and trapped you, takes the back seat, puts you on an autopilot of habit, and then that habit leads to asanas, which leads to sanskara. So this is the point I want you to see. How the mind is like, a, you know, it's like a very tricky, very cunning fellow. That we always have to watch. So, so that's what happens. So the information coming from the external um, bahya karanas and then get recorded, um, uh, gets trapped in, in the mind and the ego, and that, and then the experience gets trapped as chitta, recorded in chitta. Again, to give you, I'll give you another example of what this is. Um, let's say we, we are, we are, we are using this uh, WebEx now. So WebEx, I'm using a, I'm using a laptop that has a microphone in it, and the laptop also has a, a video camera in it. Now the microphone and the video camera are like your bahya karanas, like your eyes and the ears. So the video camera and the and the microphone are like ears, our eyes and ears. Now, once this information and Kumarji records this, you know, it's recording, he's recording already. So when he's recording it, even though I may turn the computer off, there is no more microphone, there is no more, no more video camera, but that information is somewhere there, and that is the chitta, that's the hard drive, it has gone there. Now, the reason I'm telling you is this, it's so important, because this, it is so vital, because what happens, you know, when we, when we, make so many habits when we when you accumulate all this and then and then and then accumulate bad habits or some good habits they don't go anywhere they don't, they don't disappear so they're recorded in the hardware somewhere in a very subtle in the chitta so even though the body will be gone when the body is gone like the computer is gone but still that information is somewhere same way this recorded information is not going anywhere. It's up there in the cloud. It's in the cloud computing system now. So how do we know this? In the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan, I think it's in the 12th chapter, very clearly says that when the prana leaves through a brahmarandra, then the soul takes all the vasanas and the sanskaras like a wind carries the fragrance from a flower. So that is why it's so important. Remember where, where this is all started. It all started with your mind. Even though Buddhi told you, you know, not to do this, do this instead of this. So we didn't listen. But what happened? Now it became, then the mind didn't have too much work. So we got trapped, became a habit. Now that habit is recorded. Now it became a vasana and sanskara that got, and that got added to the mountain of karmas. Now we are really trapped. Now we are really trapped. Because the karma means, the karma mountain means now we have to work it out. And when you come back again, you are come, you're going to come back with the same vasana. And if you have developed, unfortunately, some bad habits, that vasana is going to be there from the moment you are born. And that's why, you know, when you see in children different personality traits, different personality uh, um, uh, different personality displays of different personality traits you see in children, even though children may be born to the same parents with the same genes and the same upbringing. You see all these different traits because of these vasanas and sanskaras accumulated from previous incarnations. So they don't go anywhere. So this is just to give you an idea of why the mind is so important. And even though, even though your intellect may be intact, your buddhi may be intact, but if your mind is messed up, if your mind is not right, then there's nothing that the buddhi can do because we see it all around us. That's why the billions of dollars are being spent on, 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 on mental health. Mental health is so important. Billions of dollars are spent. Even though every one of these mental patients, they have buddhi, but the buddhi doesn't even come into display there. Doesn't even come into play because the mental health is gone. So once the mental health is gone, nothing can help. Even though we may have buddhi, we may have intuition, we may have this, we may have chitta. No. 
So it's a, it's a, it's a downfall from there. So that's why it's so important to keep our mind intact, and that's why that's why Tulsi Das Ji begins with begins with Nijam Manu Mukar Sudari. I clean the mirror of my mind. So again, this is not only has a practical application in day to day life, even for the long term goal of Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, which which um, which which um, Tulsi Das Ji says that Hanuman Ji will give you. So even from that long term perspective, it's so important that the mind is very clear, and we will see why. So that's why he says Nijam Manu Mukura Surari. Nijam Manu means that that what's in its original shape. Let me let me keep the mirror of my mind in its original condition, which means completely pure. Nija Nija Manu in its original condition. So he has to keep it in original condition because if we don't keep it in original condition, even though you may reach up to the Lord. You won't see the Lord. The Lord will not be reflected in that mirror. It'll be all be muddy. So it has to be in pristine original condition. The mind has been pristine original condition, like a crystal, like a pure crystal. That if you put it on red, it becomes red. If you put that crystal on green, it'll, it it becomes a green crystal. So same way, when you reach the Lord, unless your mind is completely original pristine. Crystal clear condition, you will not merge with the Lord. The, with the Lord, the, the divinity will not reflect in you. So that is why Tulsi Das Ji add another word here because Raghubar is Bimal Jasu. He is without any impurities. He, there is no impurities. Bimal means there is no there is no dirt or grime. So he says that is your goal. So when you reach that goal, and when you reach the goal of Raghubar or God. Uh, or, or Brahman, whatever it is, so be, which is bimal, which means there is no dirt in there, there is no grime in there, which is pristine pure. But if you are not pristine pure here, you have to be in its original condition. That that's it, it's not going to happen. That mukti, that ultimate, that falachari, that's not going to happen. That's why these two words are so important here, right in the opening uh, lines of Hanuman Chalisa. Nijamana Mukara Suradi. Varana Raghavar Vimal Jasu, because he is Vimal, so I have to be also Vimal Jasu. That's why I'm cleaning my mind with the dust from the feet of my Guru. And then he repeats that prayer with Hanumanji one more time, Sumatike Sangi. So we'll move on from there. So Antha Karanas, Bahya Karanas, and then where Buddhi stands in relation to mind, and then how mind tricks the ego, and then ego and the mind. Uh, they are cohorts in their because they call they use the word partners in crime. So and then they they would really take us down if you are not alert. So moving along and that's why this mind manomaya kosha um, is called karna rupa because that is the cause of everything. That's the cause of all actions. And then the actions decided by the mind are carried out by uh, by the karmendriyas. So moving along now. Uh, and this is the definition of buddhi here. Nishchatmaka buddhi, the buddhi sorts the thoughts and helps in deciding them in the right or wrong. But like we saw, most of the time buddhi is ignored. And the chitta stores the thoughts. Like I said, you see in this slide, I just put a visual representation here. The chitta stores not only the thoughts, but also the experience that comes from our, uh, our, um, our, our um, karmendriyas and jnanendriyas. And the jnana indriyas being the eye, ear, nose, and the taste, and and then the smell, and so all these are jnana indriyas. So this information is stored in the chitta; it's not going anywhere. So in the antha karana, any action. Okay, let's read this through. The antha karana provides an identification. That ahankara, I'm sorry, the ahankara provides an identification. Ahankara means sense of awareness. I'm a man, I'm a woman, I did this, I'm rich, I'm poor. All these notions that are in your mind that you associated with the concept of who you are, which is not we really are. So we are not what our mind says we are. We are, we are beyond our thoughts, which is much more than uh, our real self is nothing to do with the thoughts. The real self is beyond the thoughts, beyond the intellect. And that's why Shankara said, Manobhuti Ahankara Chittani Naham. I am none of these, none of these, none of these 
uh, none of these antakaranas. So anyway, so and then any action originates as a sankalpa in the mind, going through the stages of deciding and sorting the action and expresses in ego. And in antakarana, that the fruit of action accumulates um, and then it's stored in chitta. And just this analogy a little here, um, antakarana is the internal tool, all this, and the bahyakarana are the external tools and the mechanics like, you know, like I told you, the microphone and the MP3. MP3 is your chitta, where the, 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 the record, the recorded information, MP3 is digitized. It is digitized and then it's there. So even though the microphone may be gone, the, the, the video may be gone, the whole computer may be gone, the body may be gone, but the MP3 doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so this is how the vasanas are created, creation of vasanas and sanskaras. So the causal body, the chitta, stores the sanskaras and vasanas and impressions. Causal body means that that's the cause of your birth. That's why it's going to cause your next birth. That becomes a karana sharira. So that's why it's called causal body. The external, this is the mechanics here. The external tools, uh, and then um, the external tools feed. The internal tools analyze, and the ego accept or reject. Mind, buddhi, ego, and mind. Uh, mind, buddhi, and ego. And mind plus ego. See, see, these are the two culprits, like I said. The mind plus ego push the buddhi out, and karmendriyas take over. Karmendriyas take over, then chitta stores, there is stores and registers, and play it back on the mind for further action. Now, buddhi's role is gradually minimized and is shut out. And thus, having tricked and trapped the ego and buddhi into habit formation, the mind puts the jiva on an autopilot of habit piles, likes and dislikes, ragadvesha and vasanas, impressions. They become sanskaras. So we will see, and eventually that will lead us to our next topic called the kleshas. Because when you put an autopilot in the habits of likes and dislikes are piled, are, 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 are filed in the, in, the, in the hard drive. So likes and dislikes being like, okay, I like vanilla, I don't like butterscotch. So these are the likes and dislikes. Or I like, uh, I like vanilla, I don't like um, um, uh, something that is, I don't like bitter good because it's bitter. So these are the likes and dislikes. So like is something that, that gives you taste depending upon what is recorded in your chitta and then uh, Vesha is something that gives you pain. So these are all become kleshas later on eventually. That also uh, Goswami Tulsidas talks about in Hanuman Chalisa. That that in order to clear the kleshas, that that I am praying to Lord Guru. So we will go back to the verse one more time. Because I want you to keep track of uh, the Hanuman Chalisa because we're not dry dressing from Hanuman Chalisa. Varanor Raghavaru Mala Jasit Dodayak Falachari and then here, we, here it is. Harahu Kalesha Bikar. So I'm worshipping worshipping Hanumanji that he can clear up my Kleshas. Which are and then and then vikaras. Vikaras means they are distortions and kleshas. So the ragadvesha that we ja, we saw a while ago is just part of the kleshas. So moving along. Okay. Okay. Here. So the after the karmendriyas and jnanendriyas are gone, which means that the body is no more. Eyes are gone, ears are gone, tongue is gone, and all the brain, which was the main instrument in receiving all this information, that is gone also, which means the camera and the microphone are gone, but the recording is done and digitized and delivered on demand. This is the word I want you to remember. Recording is done, digitized, and delivered on demand. So, and how it is delivered on demand? According to Brahma Sutras, the pranas, Carry the vasanas and exit through the brahmarandram. When you leave the body from the top of your head, when the life leaves, all these things, the recording goes with it. And when you take your next birth, it's delivered on demand. So, why you call this nijaman? The mind should be clean and not cloudy or colored. 
the mirror of mind nijamanu mukhara why because clean mind means impartial observation cloudy mind is subject to prejudice and passion so when you have subject to prejudice and passion your decisions are not correct so also if i have to describe something that is pure and blemishless like ram raghavan and i have to have a pure and blemishless mind as well this is another reason why tulsidas ji prays for nijam manu mukura sudari because he is going to talk about lord ram who is absolutely purity absolute nobility so he has to be in that state of mind which is completely <clears throat> completely pure without any prejudice so he can reflect the purity of ram so that's another reason why he is asking for nijam manu here now this is a verse from patanjali yoga sutras which says the kshina vrutter abhijatasyeva maner grihati grihana grahyeshu tajjanata samapattihi so what what it means here all that he is saying is he is talking we talked about a crystal so the crystal what it does the pure crystal takes on the quality of uh, wherever it is placed so what happens then the crystal the object that it was placed on and the entire process become all one so we call in vedantic parlance vedantic language we call it triputi which means the observer the observed and the process of observation they are all one and the same so that's why if the observer is not pure and it can become one with the observed and the process of observation will also be distorted so physics has validated all this that the observer already you know is part of the whole whole system so we'll talk about it some other time so here i uh, patanjali talks about the crystal and the process of how the observer and the observed and the process of observation will all become one again coming back to a very simple example how this plays out in the spiritual world we all know mirabai who was a great saint and then she was a devotee of lord krishna and that's all she did and you know krishna bhakti but then finally finally this is what she said even though all her life she spent worshiping krishna krishna statues krishna's murti and then eventually what happened this is what she says lali dekina mai gayi i went in search of lord krishna i went looking for krishna so what happened next this is way this is long after in her advancement in spirituality lali dekhna mai gayi jita dekun tita lal lali mere lal ki mai bhi ho gayi lali so what it means is i went out i started out looking for krishna eventually what happened wherever i saw i saw krishna everything was krishna the tree was krishna the leaf was krishna the bird was krishna and then what happened in the final stage that i became krishna i myself became mai bhi ho gayi lal so that so that that is the ultimate goal of spirituality you see in order to reach there it all starts with the mind so it has to be absolutely in that in that state of nijaman so so nijaman mukha so moving along um so this is the crystal here and then and then goswami tulsida talks about the four purusharthas jo dayak falichari buddhihina tanijanike sumiro pavan kumar bala buddhi diya mohi harahi kalesha vikaru so kleshas so they will talk about the kleshas jo dayak falichari so falichari this is the most important aspect of our hindu dharma dharma artha kama mokshe we'll talk about it very briefly and then move along dharma see the word they put the word dharma first because even though these are the four other goals artha kama and moksha but whatever follows that has to be based on dharma dharma is the foundation so dharma means dharma means it, it could be translated in so many different ways the, the rough translation is virtue dharma means what is right what is appropriate according to scriptures and again when we say scriptures or you know which scriptures you know we have we have thousands of scriptures in indian in indian 
Indian Indian Vedic religion. We have the Puranas, then we have the Upanishads, then we have the Vedas, then we have the Vedangas, then we have the Darshanas, and everything. So, so when we say that, then we have the Smritis, Manusmriti, this Smriti, that Smriti. So, which what do we mean by scriptures? So, it is absolutely impossible for us to know what is dharma from the scriptures because you can't be going reading a thousand books here. So what do we do then? So what, how do we know where dharma is? So the, all this is condensed for us in the Bhagavad Gita. So, so the dharma is explained there in the Bhagavad Gita and also in, um, in, in not so much in Upanishads because Upanishads talks about only the last aspect of the Purushartha which is called the Moksha. But then, in order to get there, the foundation, dharma, is talked about. So that is how we know what dharma is, what is virtue, what is right, and what is wrong. So based on dharma, you seek wealth, you make money, you make, you know, we need money too. We need money because we have raised a family, we got to send the children to college and school, so we need money. So, but everything should be based on dharma. You make money based on dharma, and karma, you fulfill your desires. Whether you seek love or whether you are in in marriage bondage, so all that thing, your desire should be fulfilled only based upon dharma. Dharma should be the foundation, and then if all this is fulfilled, if your artha, if you making your artha is based on dharma, if your karma is based on dharma, then that will lead to moksha. So for some reason, if this equation didn't work out, then this will not happen. Moksha will not happen. So that's what Goswami Tulsidas talks about, the four Purusharthas, so Dayaka, Valachari. So again, uh, I like to mention something here. It's literally impossible for every one of us human beings to know what is right as per the scriptures, because we haven't studied the scriptures, even if you study the scriptures, like I said, there are so many of them, so there's no way to know what is the scriptures say. So then how do we, how do we act according to Dharma? So the best way to act, the best solution is, you should be able to act spontaneously. In other words, whatever action you do must be automatically in accordance with Dharma. So how is that going to happen? So that